What's up, y'all? Let's jump right into it. Franchise play with the NBA 2K14 draft class. We were in the H's, actually, but because of the way DeAndre Daniels has been playing for UConn, I figured I'd go ahead and throw him in because I think he's going to come out. I do. I think he's going to come out. He probably shouldn't, but I think he is. I mean, he just put together a huge game against Iowa State to help push UConn to the Elite Eight. And he's been playing well in the tournament. So, I mean, and he's a junior. So, I think he's on a probably dump. So, now, the thing of it is, he's 6'9", 195 pounds. Some people might give him over 200. Depends on who you, what you look at. But no matter how you look at it, he's very thin. I mean, he stands in the middle of his clothes, for sure. Let's talk about his talent level. Um, not explosive. Not explosive at all. Not a big-time leaper. Not super quick. Uh, decent off the dribble, especially for a power forward. You look at his numbers here, 47% free field goal shooter, 44% from three-point range. He's gotten really good as a, as a three-point shooter, which is going to help him. Good free throw shooter, uh, decent shot blocker, good re decent rebounder. Has very long arms. Problem with DeAndre Daniels is um, because he doesn't, he's because he's not a great athlete. Can he finish close to the basket again in the NBA? I think he probably could because of how long his arms are. It also helps him that he can step outside and knock down that jump shot, which kind of gives his whole game a whole nother uh, aspect to it. Um, will he be like a star or something? I don't think so. As a matter of fact, I think his um, his real like benefit or value in the NBA might be as like a stretch four. I got a name for you that I think you might like. It might This might actually be a good player comparison for him. Sean Williams. Sean Williams is a big, you know, big power forward. You know, he's a little heavier or whatever, stronger than DeAndre Daniels. But Sean Williams, pretty much his whole thing in the NBA is he's a stretch forward, stands outside, can knock down the three, can stretch defenses, create a little bit of a matchup issue. I think that's what DeAndre Daniels is. Only gave him the 60 rating. But, you know, uh, I think he can help a team, you know, with the with his ability to shoot from the outside. I don't know about how much more he's going to be able to do uh, in other aspects. I do think he puts the ball on the floor a, bit, a little bit better than Sean Williams. But in the NBA, I see him as more of a stretch four, shooting three, pick and roll, or I should say a pick and pop uh, as a primary option. So that is DeAndre Daniels. You see, I gave him some decent dunks, but not anything too crazy. Let's move on to the next person, which is we're going to move ahead back to the H's. Montreal Harrell. Yes, the Z is silent. The Kentucky Wildcats just beat Louisville. Uh, to me, one of the biggest reasons why Kentucky was able to win that game is because Montreal Harrell got in foul trouble. Ended up fouling out of the game. He is a big physical strong guy not super tall for the power four positions you see at six eight i think he's listed like six six and a half without shoes so six eight with shoes um but he is ex a, an explosive leaper pretty quick but probably most of all he has really long arms so where deandre daniels might struggle to, to score near the basket because he's not explosive Harrell has that explosion and the long arms and I, and the strength because of because he's a bigger got a bigger frame. I think he won't have that problem. Uh, if you're looking for a uh, NBA comparison for me, I think Harrell is like a mixture of Udonis Haslam, Kenneth Fareed, uh, more on the Fareed side because of the athleticism. Look at his numbers. Don't pay attention to that three-point field goal percentage because I think he made like two of three he made. So you can't really go by that. So I didn't give him a great rating there. But 14 a game, 8.4 boards over a block over a steal a game. Gets a lot of steals because of how long his arms are. That kind of reminds me a little bit of like Paul Millsap a little bit, which is another undersized power forward, strong guy. Um, but Harrell, is, he's, got a, he's like a spark plug. I almost gave him that. Uh, as the, I think it's the signature, I forget what they call it. Um, I forget what it's called. It's not the signature skill. This is the next thing. It's just the personality badge. So I almost gave him that because he, he's that energy kind of a dude that'll make a play and just ignite the whole team. Um, 
if he runs that baseline and waits for dribble penetration to break it down, you kick to him and he explodes off the two feet, boom! He has that type of game for sure. Um, so he, I, I think that he definitely has a, a place in the NBA for sure as a uh, power forward. If he plays with a center who is a uh, kind of like a uh, on defensive, I mean, he has to be a legit center though because you can't have two guys that are not, you know, legit size that you, on, on your front court. You don't want that. But if he plays with a legit center, I think it would really be good and really have a uh, really have a nice career. But we will see because it's probably about over because, uh, you know, he's pretty much looked at as a late lottery pick by in most draft boards that you see. Um, and because of that, he's probably going to bolt after this sophomore year, you know, kind of a disappointing loss against Louisville. And probably for, more, for most, most of the situation, he probably had already decided one way or the other. I mean, there's no word that's come out yet about Harrell, but... Um, he probably had kind of decided once he started really playing strongly down the stretch and just understood where he, you know, was likely to fall uh, in the draft. So, I mean, you can't blame him for sure. Let's move on to the next player. Looking at the twins, Andrew and Aaron Harrison of Kentucky. This is Andrew which is the man that plays, the, he's the one that plays point guard. He can play shooting guard too, but 6'5", 215 pounds, very intriguing prospect because of the size. He is not a great athlete either. He's a good athlete, not a great athlete. So he's not an explosive run jump type of a guy, but he's 6'5", 215 pounds because he's so strong, has a good feel around the basket too for uh, converting layups and he can take that contact, get to the line. It's interesting, but he does need to come back. But he's not going to more than likely, especially as deep as Kentucky's going into the draft. And he's playing well. I mean, deep as they're going into the tournament, and he's playing well. Shooting is a problem. You see, just shooting 37.7% from the field uh, over the season. 36% from three-point range, which is good. But the overall shooting ability from a Andrew Harrison is probably the, uh, one of the biggest question marks. Can he knock down the shot consistently? Of course, that's something a guy can develop over time. But... You'd like him to come into the NBA with the shot at decent, at least, from the beginning. The other thing is a worry about his decision-making as a point guard. Um, that has vastly improved from the beginning of the season. I don't know how many people watched Kentucky early and then have been watching them now. There's a really big difference in uh, the way they play in terms of just playing smarter. And I think one of the, uh, one of the biggest reasons for that is the, uh, the maturation of Andrew Harrison. He has really stepped up. Uh, makes better better decisions and he's kind of leading that team and that's impressive for a freshman so um, he by the time his the tournament run is over because I did actually predict that they would beat Louisville I uh, actually predicted they'd beat Mich Wichita State too I haven't really dropped my prediction yet against Michigan that's a tough one I'm not sure but I can tell you that they're gonna need smart play uh, from Andrew Harrison for sure because uh, the, the perimeter and wing players from Michigan are very good. So we'll see how that shakes out. But this is Andrew Harrison. I'm about to go into Aaron Harrison, his twin brother. Uh, I gave them both 63 overall ratings. Um, different, it kind of shakes out different, but um, they're, they're very, they're, they obviously, I mean, the twins, they, their games are very similar, um, which is not necessarily automatically the case because Brooke and Robin Lopez, their games are not all that similar. So, so just because you're twins doesn't mean it's going to be that way. But in this case, I think it is. This is the numbers for Aaron Harrison. A little bit better shooter, 43%. Uh, that's probably why he's scoring a little bit more, 14 a game. 34% for three-point range could be better. Both of them are good free throw shooters, and both of them knock down clutch free throws. They proved that Wichita State game as well as the game against Louisville. Um, I, I just like that clutch gene that they both possess. I think that the both of them are the types of guys that, you know, once they get their decision-making down, they're, you know, they're going to be guys that you don't mind having the ball in their hands at the end of this, at the end of games. Um, even if they're not making the shots or whatever, they're handling it and you don't worry about um, 
you know, something bad happening more or less when they're handling it. Um, but Aaron is a shooting guard, purely. He doesn't have the point guard playmaking skills that Andrew has. So, um, in some instances, it makes him a little less of a wow prospect because a 6'5 point guard is a, a, a still a little bit of a rarity. So that's exceptional size for that for that position. But his shooting guard, 6'5 through 15, is just pretty customary. And especially considering he's not, uh, Aaron's not a, a run, jump, explosive athlete, that probably explains why on most draft boards he's lower than Andrew is. Um, the most recent ones I've seen have had Andrew going in the late first round and have had um, Aaron going in the early second round. Of course, the tournament's not over. Things can change. You're also going to have the pre-draft workouts and stuff like that, so you don't know exactly how things are going to shake out. But um, that's going to be that's going to just about wrap it up for the Harrisons. Moving into the next player, which is Corey Jefferson, somebody that I really like from Baylor, um, fifth-year senior, a um, little bit older, at about 23 years old, which could be a little bit of a you know. Uh, could scare some teams off or at least push them down in the draft. I think that's going to be a mistake. I'm going to tell you who he reminds me of for a lot of reasons. Reminds me of Taj Gibson. And uh, there's a, like I said, there's a few reasons why. Looking at the statistics, uh, 13 points a game, 50% from the field, which is down a little bit from the year before, but a little bit more um, uh, responsibility. Good rebounder, 8.2, good shot blocker. Very long arms. And very athletic and explosive. Now he is a bit raw offensively, which is something very similar to what Taj Gibson was when he first got to the NBA. He was raw. The footwork and the touch that you see now from Gibson, he didn't have that when he first got to the league. And and his development is one of the reasons why he's probably going to win six man this year. Jefferson has a similar type of athleticism. He can explode, long arms, makes him a force on defense, similar to the way Taj Gibson is. But he does need to work on things that Gibson worked on, the footwork, the touch. Those things can come, but he, he's going to have to work his butt off the way Taj Gibson did to get him. Um, the other thing is the age. Gibson was old, was an old rookie when he came out of USC. And that's probably the reason that he slipped as far as he did in the first round and the Bulls were able to snatch him up. Um, Jefferson right now looks like he's a, t- a second round pick on a lot of boards, but you wait until Portsmouth come, happens and some of the other pre, pre-draft stuff, I have a feeling Corey Jefferson's going to jump off the charts at some people. I like his game a lot, and um, I think he could really be a decent player. I gave him the 68 rating, which is uh, pretty high on my scale, um, especially for a guy that's projected to go to the second round. But I'm calling it like I see it based off of the statistics as well as the, you know, the, the footage that's out there of him and the times that I've watched Baylor play. This guy can ball. I mean, he can ball. I like this game a lot. So um, I think he's a could be a hidden gem for some teams. We'll see what happens, though, with him and where he's going to get picked. Taking a look at some of the signature stuff. Um, I, you know, try to, when we get to the dunks a little bit, you'll see, I gave him a little bit of love on the dunks because he throws them down pretty nicely. Long arms and uh, just just a physical guy in, uh, in close to the basket. So let's move to our last guy, Nick Johnson of Arizona, the nephew of Boston Celtics great Dennis Johnson. People might not have known that. Now, Dennis Johnson was a good defender, real good defender on ball. Wasn't a great athlete. Well, that's not the case with Nick Johnson. Nick Johnson is a beast. He's a good run, jump athlete, can explode, finish close to the basket. Uh, He's not an east-west kind of a guy, so he's not got that shake that's going to uh-uh, break guys off off the dribble, beat guys moving left and right. He's more of a north-south dude. So uh, the good thing of it is, is he can do that while dribbling. So, you know, he can make those mad slashes, dashes, and things like that to the basket. And once he gets there, he can finish because he can get up. He's 6'3", 200 pounds, good size for a point guard, strong, can take the contact when he goes inside, but has that extra lift 
to uh, get a he can literally finish above the rim. So you gotta love that about him. The field, the shooting uh, could get a little bit better, but 36, 37 percent from three point range is good. Good free throw shooter. You see the rebounding there. He rebounds very well for a guard, point guard, or whatever. Um, and you might look at things like the durability and the uh, stamina. I kind of base that on the minutes played that those guys have been doing, uh, you know, through their collegiate careers. So, but the athleticism is the reason why I gave him the posterizer and the acrobat. Um, Arizona still in the tournament, heading into the Elite Eight matchup with Wisconsin. Um, Wisconsin surprised me, to be honest. I thought that Baylor was going to beat them. I thought Baylor was playing very well. They were hot. Um, I thought it was really impressive that they were able to beat Nebraska despite, despite the fact that Brady Haslip had only, I think he was 0 for 5 from three-point range that game. So to me, for them to show that they could win without Haslip bombing away, I thought that they were going to, you know, Gonna gonna play well, gonna do well against uh, Wisconsin. Wasn't the case. Wisconsin beat the devil out of Baylor, and now Wisconsin's going in to play Arizona. It's gonna be interesting because Wisconsin wants to shut you down. They want to, uh, you know, they want to really grind it out on defense. Frank Kaminsky's in there. Uh, I, the Arizona doesn't really have anybody to match up with the size that way. So it's gonna be interesting. Um, how that runs. Now, Nick Johnson does have hair, so, but, you know, you know what the deal is. We run out of black people with hair. We run out of light-skinned black guys who have hair, whatever, you know. So, um, like I said, this is going to be an interesting game. Uh, Nick Johnson, Aaron Gordon, what's going to happen? Some Sam Decker, Frank Kaminsky. We don't know. We'll see what happens. Should be a good game. Should just be some good Elite Eight games, period. I mean, all of these games are looking pretty good uh, just in terms of you know anticipating the action but that'll do it for these guys so let's look at some of the new guys that i am going to do in episode 12 okay so we see you gave nick johnson the 69 overall rating pretty good but big daddy deandre big daddy kane almost messed around and had two straight triple doubles even though they did lose to uconn in the sweet 16 game but gonna hook him up and again don't pay attention to the rating yet and the, the, the school and some of the other stuff and or the age because he's older than that um because like i mentioned i haven't uh changed this stuff yet for these guys sean kilpatrick from cincinnati now zach levine or levine i don't know if it's levine or levine i don't know what it is but he's already announced he's coming out so we already did that before so i'm not gonna go through that James Michael McAdoo. Now, of all the faces I was able to match up, I think I've, his might be the, the cleanest match. Going to hit that one uh, in the next episode. KJ McDaniels, arguably the best athlete in the draft. This dude got boom. He can leap. So we're going to uh, hook him up, put him in. And somebody that everybody's been asking about, or at least a lot of people. When you're going to do Doug McDermott? Well, Doug McDermott will be a part of update number 12. So, uh, Creighton Blue Jay fans, be on the lookout for that one. Going to hook up that rating there for him. So, um, as a matter of fact, I might have actually already done it. I don't know. I, that might not already be completely finished. But y'all stay tuned. Subscribe. Follow. Peace.